So far, we have mainly focused on existing networking protocols, their shortcomings, how they can be exploited to launch attacks, and we have also seen some defenses against such attacks. Now what we are going to see is if networking protocols were designed from scratch with security in mind, how do they look? So let's see. So here is the outline. We will look at different layers of the protocol stack and protocols at these layers that have been designed with security in mind. So at the application layer, there is SSH protocol, which many of you are already familiar with. DNSSEC, we already covered, so we won't get into it. Transport layer, TLS SSL is again another secure transport layer protocol. This also we finished. Network layer, we will cover IPSEC. And at the link layer, we will cover WPA and WEP. Before we dig in, it's good to understand what does security mean at different layers. So when we say secure protocols at the application layer, the idea here is that there is some functionality you want to support and you want to ensure that this functionality is secure as well. Thereby, the developer has to implement all security mechanisms. And whatever operation security operations you are doing like encryption and integ integrity checks and so on, these will be over the application payload. So unlike for example when we dealt with HTTPS, it's the transport layer that is performing these encryption integrity operations. Whereas when we talk about protocols like SSH which are operating at the application layer, this protocol itself is implementing these security mechanisms. Similarly, at transport layer, if you were to provide security, many applications can leverage. That is what we have seen in the case of TLS SSL. Web application can use it, email application can use it and so on because these are running at the application layer. Earlier, they were just opening regular sockets. Now they can open secure sockets based on SSL and TLS. That is what is shown in this particular figure. Again, even in this case, the security operation that is the encryption and integrity will be over the application payload. So these applications will generate some message and you are doing encryption and integrity checks over this. So when you do something like this, there are no changes to the operating system, but the application needs to change because earlier it was using TCP socket. Now it has to use an SSL socket. That means you have to change the application. One other thing I want to mention is that these can be subject to denial of service attack. We have seen this earlier as well. For example, if you inject malicious data and the integrity check fails, you can close the connection. This will result in a denial of service. So what does it mean to sec do security at the network layer? So the idea here is that when you do this, you are securing the internet. In other words, you are protecting every packet. This offers better protection against DOS. So when you implement security at the network layer, you have to make changes to the operating system. Unlike in the earlier case where application layer protocols as well as transport layer protocols, as we have seen, there is no change to the kernel. Whereas in network layer security, you have to make changes to the operating system because this is what deals with packets and you're protecting packets. And one big advantage of this is all applications are protected without any changes. Earlier, you were having to insist that an application use this SSL or TLS, which comes with TCP. But if there was an application that let's say wants to use UDP, it doesn't have much of a choice. It has to implement the security functionality as part of the application itself. And these deal with application layer changes. Whereas when you do network layer security, you don't have to change the applications. Whatever packets they are generating, when they come to the network layer, they are protected. All applications are protected in fact, but this requires kernel level changes. One other point to note is that the endpoint protection when we deal this network layer security is an IP address and not a user. But if you can change the application, the endpoint can be a user because this is how things are implemented in the internet. That is why this condition arose. 
and when you provide the security here the security operation that is the encryption integrity checks all that will be over the transport header and application payload in other words application is sending some message m to which you have added a transport layer header it could be a udp header tcp header or whatever and then you are providing security over this and thereby you may be encrypting both the transport layer header as well as application layer pay payload or doing some integrity checks over it link layer security means you are only offering protection only over that link this is very local so if there are two nodes a and b there is a link between them you are trying to protect what happens over this link but so the point to note here is the security can be compromised at other points for example this a wants to send packets to some server that is sitting in the internet and this b let's say is just uh, an access point that like wireless access point when we say link layer security or just protecting communications from a to the access point after this point on whatever packets go on if the router is malicious it can potentially do something to this packets that is the security can be compromised at these points and this link layer security the specific network device driver will implement it again because of this all applications can benefit without any changes to them and link layer security means the security operation will be over network transport headers as well as application payload so for example if you are looking at a web traffic there is some get request that is there to this you are adding a transport layer header which is a tcp header and then you add a network layer header that is ip header and this entire thing you may be doing encryption or doing some integrity check so with this background let's look at individual protocols at different layers of the protocol stack so one thing i would like to mention before we dig into the individual protocols is that our coverage of these protocols is going to be at a very high level each of this protocol is very complex in fact it can take a good portion of the course itself to cover some of these protocols we will just cover the basic concept that is being used to provide security for this particular protocol let's start with ssh so ssh is useful to remotely administer a machine prior to ssh what is the protocol that we are using that's right telnet r login you may not have heard of this is also used for the same purpose ftp is a file transfer protocol often this goes hand in hand with uh, telnet where here you are typing in some commands and remotely administering this machine whereas here you are transferring a file from your machine to that remote machine so ssh is the secure shell that is the equivalent of telnet and this often goes hand in hand with scp which is the equivalent of ftp which stands for secure copy scp which is used for file transfer so how does this protocol work let's see ssh relies on tcp protocol because it wants reliability and the first step is the client connects to the ssh server via tcp in other words here is your machine and here is your remote machine this could be some lab machine which you are trying to log in it is expected that this remote machine has an ssh server running to permit this type of remote administration so let's say this is your laptop and you want to log in to this remote machine securely and execute some commands so the first step here is that the client connects to this ssh server sitting on this remote machine via tcp this is because ssh wants to have reliability after the tcp handshake much like in ssl tls both parties exchange supported encryption methods protocol version and so on after this they initiate a secret key exchange to establish a shared key this is based on diffie hellman key exchange this is for encryption this is not for authentication again that is something i want you to keep in mind and then starts authentication where server sends a list of acceptable authentication mechanisms which the client will try in sequence 
So one can be password based where the client passes the password encrypted with the shared key derived using the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. This also supports public key based where if the client has a public key, it can send the server its public key and server checks if this key is authorized. This is pre-configured into the server and server then sends a challenge to the client using the client's public key. The client has to decrypt it with the private key and respond to the server. So this is a challenge response much like we have seen as part of cryptographic protocols. Once the client is authenticated, the server lets its access its resources. For example, it will give a command prompt. So what we have seen here is the client is being authenticated by the server. But what about server authentication? That is, how about the client authenticating the server? This we have seen earlier. What is it based on? That is right, leap of faith. In other words, the client trusts the server the first time and saves its public key. And next time it's contact the server, if the public key were to change, it will give a warning. So that is more or less with SSH. As you can see, there is a lot of similarity between SSH and SSL and TLS. But there are some differences as well. For example, this leap of faith is a big difference.